Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We were talking about Zoe Lyon this morning, and, um, and I might need a camera person on camera left. Um, um, Carrie's not here tonight. They went to see their grandbaby, Scotty's little girl, in a Christmas, her first Christmas program. Uh, so they wanted to go see that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're talking about this morning on the life of God. You know that it comes from God. We're going to, t- we're going to share uh, tonight for a little while on, on the fact that uh, it, although the life comes from God, we receive that life by believing on him. John, the first chapter, the gospel of John, that is. Make sure we're in the right place. Come on. Boy, I flipped one time and covered 35 pages. Try to go back and you can't, you can't get there harder. And I don't have Dad Hagen's excuse. Hallelujah. All right, John chapter 1 says um, in verse 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And then further over in John chapter 5, Verse 26, for as the Father hath life in himself, in other words, God doesn't get his life outside of himself. He is life. In other words, it it proceeds from him. He doesn't go get it. It, He is life. Uh, So he hath given the Son to have life in himself. Then verse 29 of that same chapter, and he, he shall come forth, they that have done good. Well, we better go to John 5 here. Right. We'll just read here from what we were reading before. For the Father has given life in himself, so he's given the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he's the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the grace shall hear his voice, and shall come forth. They shall have done good unto the resurrection of life, unto they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. And so, um, there is that life. Jump down to the verse 39 of this same chapter. Search the scriptures, for you in them you think you have eternal life, and they are which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, and that you have not the love of God in you. I am coming to my Father. I am coming in my Father's name, and you shall not. Rec- you shall receive me not. If another shall come in my own name, him you will receive. Hallelujah. And, and then how can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. In other words, the law. The very law that they trusted in and, and tried to reject Jesus with is the very thing that will accuse them before the Father. For you, had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So back up in verse 39, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are which testify of me and you will not come to me that you might, uh, you might have life. So we get the life from Jesus, praise the Lord. John six twenty seven. labor not for the meat that perishes, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life and the son of man which gives unto you for he, him hath God the father sealed. Verse 33, for the bread of life is he which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Verse 40, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and, and, here's a key, believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 47 and 8, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Um, Verse, chapter 8, verse 12, Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. Verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 25. We'll stop right here for right now. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he 
live. And so we have a number of scriptures here where the life is, where it comes from, and how we get it. How we get it is by believing on him. You cannot have that life without believing on him. You will not receive that life without believing on him. You must believe on him if you're going to have the life. And so um, the Zoe life of God has been made available. Jesus has come and shed his blood and made provision for that life. That life is there. <clears throat> he came. And, and remember, uh, if we go back in Scripture and go back into the beginning of things, uh, beginning of uh, creation, um, it, which was not a cosmic cloud floating around, spinning around, exploding, throwing out these little sun balls out here in the middle somewhere, and then lots of little planets thrown out, and they all spun around. Everything spun around until you created the solar system exactly you know, the perfect distance from the sun. And, and, and out of all this cosmic stuff, water appeared. And, and you had uh, the right atmosphere, oxygen, and all these things. And, and then one day, there was an electrical spark and a little amoeba kind of cell, single cell organism. Or maybe not even a single cell organism, just a, a, a little protoplasm or whatever. Had life. And then from that little protoplasm, everything else evolved into all the different species we have. Land living, flying, water living, you know, hogwash. God created it, okay? <clears throat> I mean, boy, if you believe all that, you got more faith than I ever thought about having. Because it takes some faith to believe all that. Without intelligent, I mean, you, you know, just to say, without intelligent design, that took place. They created life in a test tube. That's it. They, intelligent design, okay? They put all things together to create something. It wasn't, didn't happen by chance, okay? And they haven't caused that to evolve either. It doesn't become a monkey. Just thought I'd throw that out there, okay? Now, in, when you look in creation, God created the heaven and the earth. Saw everything was good. Then he created man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into him the breath of life. Now, the word uh, breathe, breath in the Hebrew and the word for breath in the Greek both have this same um, occurrence. Breath, spirit, and wind all come from the same Hebrew word and from the same Greek word for those different languages. So God took of his spirit and put into that body. And man became a living soul, or the, as the Hebrew says, a speaking spirit. God's life, God's Zoe, the life that God had in himself was placed in that body. And when it was placed in that body, he became a speaking spirit. That body was able to live. So in the beginning, man was created from the Zoe of God, the very essence of who God is. The psalmist says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Thou hast created him a little lower than the angels. Now, the word angels there in the King James translation of <clears throat> Psalm 8, actually in the Hebrew is Elohim, is one of the words for God. And it means plurality in the, uh, in, in, of majesty in three or more. In other words, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, thou hast created him a little lower than Elohim, and, uh, you know, Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God didn't create us lower than angels. Angels didn't have free moral right to um, make choice. Man had the right to make choice. Angels didn't. And because angels didn't have the right, they were, there is no redemption for them. Man had the right. He made the wrong choice. God, in, in his plan, made a, made a provision to redeem man. By making his choice to follow after God. Okay? So God made man in the very beginning, not a little lower than the angels. He made him a little lower than Elohim. He made him a little lower than himself. Because he was created from the very, the very essence of what God is. Is what God made man with. Took of his own spirit and placed in that body. Man became a speaking spirit or a, you know, as King James says, a living soul, but a speaking spirit. Therefore, in the beginning, man was created from what God is, Zoe. 
Now, when Adam committed high treason in the Garden of Eden, he was born again. He passed from life unto death. Satan became the spiritual father. And Jesus, as he said this morning, reiterated that when he said to, to, the, uh, to the Jews, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father. Well, how did they become the father? How did Satan become their father? They became spiritually dead men and women due in consequence to the fall of man. Or <clears throat> it's like one guy says, Adam was the first man to be born again. Not in the New Testament doctrine set of the new creation. It was he's the first man to be born from life unto death. He, became, he was born, he was created with life. He was born again by committing high treason and accepting Satan's lordship and rulership over him and becoming spiritual dead. He was born from a status of life, having the life of God in him, to a status of being Satan, his spiritual father, being spiritually dead. Okay. <clears throat> Jesus, as our uh, foundation text or main text said this morning in John 10, 10, now the, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it, that is life, more abundantly. To have it, or the, uh, one uh, person or one translation says, have it to the full. You know, uh, but it's, you know, people say, well, it's the abundant life. Well, it, it is having the zoe of God in fullness. It's really what you could say there. You know, um, abundant life is having and living in zoe life to the fullest. Letting it, let, letting it affect every arena of life. Spirit first, soul secondarily, and ultimately body. Now remember when you're born again, he, uh, if, there, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. What happened? Your spirit got born again. That was the life of God affecting um, in, in new, new covenant reality, affecting the state or the status of the human spirit. The human spirit was made alive unto God. Hallelujah. The very essence of God once again re-entered into the spirit of man that receives Jesus as Lord, and his spirit's born again. Remember, Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says, can I enter the second time into my mother's womb? And uh, Jesus says, are you a teacher of Israel and don't understand this? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Hallelujah. You must be, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. And so when the life of God, and so, and, and then Jesus went on with his ministry, and then he went and paid the price for man, became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. And um, that's verse 21, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And, um, and, and so the very first effect of, the, uh, of coming into relationship with God through faith in what Jesus accomplished for us, accomplished for us is the spirit of man is born again. It goes from this position or status of child of Satan. Remember Jesus said in John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil. Hallelujah. To child of God. Your, your spirit is born again. Now, you've received in your human spirit the zoe of God. And it has now taken uh, massive, and well, no, no, that's probably not the right word. It has taken complete uh, control of in the sense that it re- defines who your spirit is. You're no longer lost without God, without hope in this world. You're no longer alienated from the covenants of God. You're no longer a, a spiritual being who's a spiritual rebel. You become a child of God. Now, what about your mind? Well, your mind's got to be renewed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He says also over in James, receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. Hallelujah. Well, what, what are we doing here? We are allowing it now once we're born again, the spirit of man. Remember 2 Thessalonians 5, 23 says that Paul wrote and said he prays our whole spirit, soul, and body, our whole pneuma, our whole suke, our whole soma, be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Well, what got born again? Your pneuma. What do you do with your suke? You renew it. What do you do with the soma? You keep it under. It's a, it's a, it's a sacrifice, sacrificial lamb. Amen? Hallelujah. Just kidding. Now, don't take that one to go off the deep end with that. Uh, you, you, you keep your body under. And, of course, you'd find that real quick if you'd gone off the deep end. 
Hallelujah. Now, man's a triune being. Now, what we are to do, that we're, we're, you know, um, we, we was, and we were teaching, <laughs> I think we got one more service, the life and teachings of Paul. We got one more chapter. Started in January of 2014. We're going to finish on uh, December 30th, I think, 2015. About, you know, just almost two years. But I remember when we were teaching out of Romans, I, I believe it was Romans or 1 Corinthians, um, how that the, the, the life of godliness causes us to live in a whole new plane altogether. Okay? You know, the Bible says that, you know, we're, we're new creatures. We live in a whole new plane. All, what do you mean? The life of God. See, this is it. It is not an effort on our part to do right. It is us living from the life within. Not grace coming on the outside of us making us do it. The grace of God made the provision so we could receive the life, so we could live from that life. And the grace of God will empower us to live from that life, but we got to live from that life. And that is what we're to do. We are to live from the Zoe of God. The very life that's, that's in, in us now, when we got born again, becomes the source of how we live. Okay? And so now we begin to live out of that light. Well, number one, it immediately affects our spirit being because we're born again. We're alive unto God. We now can commune with God, the Father, Spirit, the Spirit, because he's the Father of spirits. Ha <laughs> ha. Praise God. I said we're able to commune with him, Spirit, the Spirit. We no longer have to make stupid statements like we make in, you know, in, in uh, uh, the world, uh, calling the man upstairs, the maker. This, this, this outside relationship or attempt to have a relationship, it's not there. We now live out of the very essence of who he is. It's been, part of our, it's been imparted into our spirit now that we're born again. And so we live from there. Our spirit man now communes with God. Now, as we feed on the word of God and renew our mind, that same life begins a transformative process in our thinking. What do you mean? Well, we just quoted two scriptures, Romans 12. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, and be not conformed, verse 2, to Romans 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Now, we've, we've said this a number of times. We'll say it again, because there's always going to be somebody that's listening for the first time, never heard this. The word transform comes from the Greek metamorpho. And that is where we get our English word metamorphosis. Bullfrogs and... Uh, um, butterflies. Okay? Now, I know Barry McGuire did the cute song, Bullfrogs and Butterflies have both been born again. It's just unscriptural. Okay? We don't go through a metamorphosis to get saved. We're instantly born again. You're born a new creature. It is the soul, the suke of man that experiences a metamorphosis. It's transformative over time. See, a met metamorphosis doesn't take place instantly. How many of you have ever seen tadpoles in the, in the different stages? You know, they got the little tails and getting the little feet, and then the tails are getting shorter, and, you know, they're getting bigger, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, they're, they're on land, the tail's gone, they got feet. Now, before then, it was little swimmy things. They, they had a metamorphosis. They, they transformed from one state to another. The caterpillar crawls up, creates a cocoon, stays in there until he comes back out as a butterfly. There's a metamorphosis. It didn't happen instantly. Okay? The soul of man doesn't get born again. It gets transformed. It gets met. So now we, what do we, do? we allow the very life of God that's in us through the word of God to affect a transformation of the, of the suke, of the mind. That transformative process is called renewing the mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Now the life of God is affecting the soul of man, the suke of man, and the soul of man. Well, what happens then? It's two verses one. The body's outnumbered. I said the body's outnumbered. If you do not renew the mind, E.W. Kenya made a statement in his writings, and, it's, and when you first read it, you kind of go tilt. But then as you begin to understand things, see, when you got born again, you didn't get... You, you, I, how many notice when you got born again that everything in the world didn't just stop happening? Your mind didn't stop thinking the way it thought. It took time of study of the Word of God and meditating in the Word of God for it to affect 
the thought process or the thought process. You be, to, until you began to think different. Now look, even, even after three and a half years of walking with Jesus, Peter reverted back on the night they came to arrest him. Sitting there listening to and teach day and night on the love of God, walking in love and not, you know, not living by the sword and all this kind of stuff. And the Roman soldiers come up, he cuts the guy's ear off. Then he goes there to watch them, you know, put him on trial. And, and uh, the girl, they keep asking him, this one asks him, a guard asks him, a little girl asks him, a different person asks him, are you one of them? No, I'm not one of them. Yeah, well, you are. Yes, you are. Finally, one of them said, your speech betrays you. And he started cussing. So it wouldn't sound like he was one of them. Amen. I said, Amen. And so uh, the life of God starts first with an instant transformation of the human spirit, which needs to grow as we uh, desire to sincere milk of the word, and we grow thereby, etc. Then the mind is renewed, where that, that's where the life of God goes in, and this, this, let's use this term. It's not going to be an accurate term as far as how it actually happens, but I help, help you understand. Rewires your thinking. Okay? The engrafted word which is able to save, or sozo, your suke, it, it restores, transforms the way you think. So what's doing that? The life of God. The zoe of God is doing that through the word of God. It's in the word of God. The word of God contains God's very life. Amen. Are you just saying amen, Penny? All right. Hallelujah. Now, well, how do you know that? Well, have you ever read Peter? I believe 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. You ever read that? Well, now in the Greek, the word seed is sperma. The life of God. The life, God's life is in that word. That's, that's, that's the Greek word there. So, I'm, you know, it's, it's sperma. And so God, God's word contains The reproductive life of God. It reproduces in that which it is planted what it is. God's life. So when we receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, we're receiving his very life, his sperma that has in it the, the nature, the, the spiritual DNA of God for it to affect where it goes. So it goes into your soul. It begins to rewire it. Uh, kind of like the Matrix, anyway. <laughs> Try to use all these analogies. People kind of going, what? You know, what? Uh, Borg, you're assimilated. I mean, I'm, come on. Help me out here. But it, that, that life of God, the Zoe of God goes in. So you're born again instantly. Boom, you're saved. Through, the, through receiving by faith the, the word of God. You get born again. But the soul, we've told from Romans, it's a transformative process. You go through a metamorphosis. And, and of course, James makes that, you know, receive a meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to restore your, you know, so, so, restore your suke. It goes in there and begins to work. And it re, it's reprogramming the way you were trained to think. You begin to think in line with the life of God, not with the world. What about my body? Ephesians 1, you're sealed with the spirit of promise. Now, the Bible says that when Jesus returns, this mortal shall put on immortality, this corruptible shall put on incorruption. But I also like the fact that if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, it'll quicken or make alive what? Your mortal body. Now, it doesn't change your mortal body to be something different. But the life of God in you, the life of God affecting your, so the life of God that's tra that you were born again, your, your pneuma was born again with, the life of God that has restored or transformed or metamorphosed your soul, your suke, will now hold and keep your soma, keep your body. Amen. The very life of God in it will quicken it. In other words, it will eradicate the effects of the law of sin and death. Now, you'll still die. How do you know? Because it says it'll quicken your mortal body. 
He said, when Jesus comes, this, this mortal shall put on immortality. Uh, so until Jesus comes, our bodies are still death doomed. We're sealed with the spirit of promise, but the life of God will keep our body well and strong and healthy until we live out our length of days or, we go, or the rapture takes place, whichever comes first. Amen. So the life of God will affect your mortal body. The very life of God. I'll tell you something, folks. Now, some of you think you, some of you might think you look old. You don't want to know what you look like without the life of God in you. I'm telling you, you've been kept by the life of God. Now, I was somewhere recently, and, and, and this lady came down to where I was uh, with family. This lady came in, and she's around there sitting around talking and stuff and carrying on. And, and uh, I mean, and I'm, th I'm thinking, this lady is old. And, and she said something, and I said, and I said, well, how old are you? She said, I was born in 56. And I just kind of sat there with that dumb look on your face and didn't say anything else. And when she turned around, Jane looked over at me and said, you were born in 58. And she looks a whole lot older than you. Matter of fact, she said, I thought she was at least 70, 75. She does drugs. She drinks, smokes, lives a rough life. And she looks like she's 15, 20 years older than me. What's the difference? The life of God keeps you. I said, the life of God will keep you. It'll keep you looking younger even when you're older. Yeah. Some of you thinking, my God, I'm glad I got saved. I'd hate to see what I look like. A number of years ago, they did a special. It was on a 2020 special, Diane Sawyer. And they were going down. They were, they were talking to uh, this particular show. For some reason, they were talking to a prostitute who was a, who was a crack addict. And uh, I'm looking at this woman, and I'm thinking, who wants a 70-year-old prostitute? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, she is wrinkled, ragged out, skinny as all get out. I'm thinking, she's got the seven. I'm, I'm thinking, a 70-year-old prostitute? That's what I'm thinking. They ask her how she was, she was 27. See, the life of God will quicken your mortal body. I said, it'll quicken, it'll make it, it'll, the life will affect. I said, the life of God will affect your physical body. Well, didn't, didn't the, the prophet say in the book of Isaiah, I believe chapter 41, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Can you say amen? amen. I said, Amen. You see the what? They that wait upon the Lord. They, they, they are in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. They're going to renew their strength. They're going to mount up on wings of eagles. They're going to run. They're not going to be weary. They'll walk. They won't faint. What's happening there? Well, in New Testament terminology, the Zoe of God is affecting their physical body. It's quick. As, as we said, it's the same spirit that raised Christ up from the dead dwell in you. It'll quicken, make alive your mortal body. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. We need to learn. We need to learn early on. And it's, ne it's never too late to learn, but it's, you know, we need to learn early on how to let that work in us by faith. How to receive the life of God. How to live in the life of God. How to let it, you know, start, yes, in our, in our suke. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. In our pneuma. And then move to transforming our suke. And then allowing it to penetrate even to our mortal bodies and, and quicken it. And live out of that life on a daily basis in our spirit, soul, and body. Now, you're going to die. I'm just going to tell you. If Jesus doesn't come back, you will die. Your body will wear out and it will die. But it will, it will wear out good. If you're letting the life affect it. Don't, you know, you got, you got all these people who just think, oh, I'm never going to die. Jesus told John, he's still alive on the earth somewhere, you know. There are people who believe that. There are people who believe that. 
How do you know? I had a roommate. He'd sit around and teach. Oh, he'd try to teach us. Yeah, John's still alive somewhere on the earth. He pulled out that scripture. What is it to you if he lives until I come back? And then John, in his own gospel, turned right around and said, he didn't say I'd live until he comes back. He just said to Peter, what is it to you if I do? If you read the whole Bible, you wouldn't get weird. Hallelujah. No, no, you're, you're going to eventually, you're going to eventually reach a place where you walk with God, and, uh, and if Jesus doesn't come back in 100, 125 years, when you're 100, 125 years or whatever, you're going you're gonna to leave your body. You're going to go to heaven. Amen. You can still be well. I said you can still be well. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So what are we going to do? We're going to allow the Zoe life of God that we, we received at the new birth. We're going to meditate in the word and allow it to, to affect the mind, the soul, so that we think differently. We think godly. We think the way God thinks. And then we're going to walk and live on the earth in that state where it's affecting our physical body so that we can carry out the purpose and the will of God. Amen. Amen. Healthy. Sound. That doesn't mean you can cast calories out of your food and eat 17,000 calories in a day. And expect to get away with it. I think they said on Easter, on, not on Easter, on, on Thanksgiving, they, they said the, uh, that people on average would eat 4,500 calories on Thanksgiving Day. I may have done six. Thousand, that is. Hallelujah. I don't, I'm just joking. I only ate one plate. When I was younger, I can guarantee you when I was younger, I ate nine or 10,000. I used to gorge myself. Those days are gone forever. I don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. So, we now receive this life by faith. We live this life out of the realm of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And the results of this is Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. You ready? That your days may be multiplied. The days of your children in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Stop waiting to get to heaven to live what God's already given you to live here. You know, Dole Tucker had a song called Zoe's Invading. Zoe, Zoe's Invading. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember how it goes. I hadn't heard in a while. Amen. But the life of God will invade your every being. It'll affect every arena of your life. It'll transform you. Hallelujah. And you can live with days of heaven on the earth. Glory to God. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.